Yellow Jacket Season 3 is officially in production. Filming for Season 3 started last week, and with that has come lots of new footage and news for us to talk about. This show has had some really bad luck, with COVID shutting down production in Season 1, and then obviously the writer's strike, shutting down writing and pre-production for Season 3. So to hear that the show is finally back in filming is awesome to hear. And over the course of the past few days, there have been some massive bombshells regarding Season 3. The likes of characters getting recasted, new plot details, and of course, new stuff for us to theorize about. As I'm sure the case is for many of you, my favorite part is coming up with theories and discussing them with other fans, connecting the missing pieces and figuring out how one character got from points A to B. I think this is why so many Yellow Jackets fans were also fans of shows like Lost or Twin Peaks. The first official news we've got is we've learned the timeline of filming for season three. As I mentioned, filming for season three started here in late May and is supposed to continue until roughly mid-October. This means roughly six months of filming, which is very similar to how long it took seasons one and two to film. The reason this is important is there was only about a month of post-production for seasons one and two. While the showrunners have announced an early 2025 release date, a late 2024 release is not out of the picture, say in late November or sometime in December of this year. Regardless, the release of season three looks to be on track and fans shouldn't be worried. The biggest piece of new content that we've got recently is a new promo with the cast announcing they're back in filming season three. And in the video, there's a lot to break down and take away. It appears that there'll be a time skip in the young 1996 timeline from the end of season two to the start of season three. This is because in all the new set photos and footage, there's no snow in sight. Further evidence of a time skip is that Natalie's roots are continuing to grow out. She's almost fully a brunette and her hair looks very similar to how it did in the flash forward scene when the girls were rescued. And I'm a massive fan of this time skip and getting to move on from winter and leave that behind us. I thought one of the biggest flaws of season two was that everyone was stuck inside of this cabin. 99% of the time in the 1996 timeline, a scene would take place inside of this cabin. Season one had this survivor-like feel where two characters would go scheme in an isolated part of the woods or go have a sidebar. This obviously was not possible in such a close quarters environment like the cabin. Characters couldn't hold secrets from one another and it felt like everyone knew what was going on with each other. There was no opportunity to like build alliances and develop separate relationships. With it being cold outside, basically nobody left the cabin. Well, except for Misty. She, she got up to a lot of stuff outside of the cabin. but that's, that's to be expected. So I'm glad the show can get back to this season one like feel. Especially because even if they wanted to go back into the cabin, they couldn't, it's gone. <laughs> Coach Ben really said, screw them kids. My biggest question here though is will we have any winter scenes following the immediate aftermath of this cabin burning down? And part of me wants to see what they do and how they react, how they respond. But I'm also fine with just skipping straight to spring and picking up where they are at that point. After all, there wasn't much winter left anyways because at the start of season two, we know they've already been in winter for two months at that point. And so by the end of season two, there's really not that much left. In other big news, there's been a massive recast in the Young 1996 timeline. Young Shauna has been recasted. All right, all right, I'm joking. But, but, the extremely important character of Jen, she's been recasted. Who, you might ask? Who's Jen? I've I've never heard of a Jen. All all valid points. And yeah, I, I don't blame you. Jen barely had any screen time. But diehard fans will remember her all the way back from season one. That's right, she's been in both seasons and slowly started to creep her way into a more prominent character at the end of season two. And we know she's been recasted because in this new video promo, there was a different actress playing Jen. In this promo, I didn't even recognize at first that Jen had been recasted and I didn't notice it until I watched it for a second time. So if anything, give credit to the casting director. New Gen will be played by Vanessa Prasad, and I mean New Gen and Old Gen side by side look very similar. Regardless, it still sucks having to recast a character that's been in 16 episodes of the show. Albeit mostly in the background, but still, this is a character that's been on screen for the entire show. This recasting is also so frustrating because Aquila was just recasted last season. However, the one positive that has so far come out of Jen's recasting is that there's been a lot of speculation surrounding the identity of Pit Girl because of it. A lot of people are making the argument that because the writers decided to recast this minor, minor character of Jen, instead of just killing her off screen, that the writers must have something big in store for her, such as making her pit girl. And I kind of like this idea, and I like this argument. It'd be super easy for the writers to just kill Jen off screen, throw a line in there saying, it's been two months since Jen died in the cabin fire or it's been two months since Jen froze to death. It would have been super easy, and there's honestly no reason to distract the audience further by recasting another character. So the argument is that because the writers decided to keep her, 
there's something more to her character. Personally, I think the writers just didn't want this character to disappear off the face of the planet. I absolutely hate it when a death of a character is just referenced off screen. And she was already enough of a minor character that this new actress could actually be a good thing. She could breathe new life into the character and add more substance. And this is not me hating on Jen's previous actress, it's just Jen was really never given an opportunity to shine. And this new take could actually be a good thing. So I don't think that 100% Jen is the pit girl because I mean, Real ones know that Mari is the pit girl. I mean, come on. But regardless, this theory is interesting to think about. Another thing I noticed is that Nat is still wearing Jackie's necklace after the hunt. This necklace of Jackie has been on a crazy journey of its own. Jackie obviously died with the necklace on, and then the girls gave Nat the necklace during the hunt. We also know that Pit Girl died with the necklace on. So because of all these three events, I think it's safe to assume that Jackie's necklace becomes part of the ritual of the hunt. Whatever girl draws the queen and is the one being hunted is given Jackie's necklace, just like Nat was. Natalie still wearing the necklace suggests that the Antler Queen wears the necklace in between kills or in between hunts. And it's here where stuff gets interesting. A lot of people think there are going to be multiple antler queens. I mean, we already have two, but others besides Lottie and Nat. In the season two finale, we saw Natalie become the antler queen after she survived the hunt and the wilderness decided it wasn't her time. Lottie thought this was enough of a reason that she should now be their leader. And I think if a situation like this were to happen again and a character survives a hunt, I could see this new person becoming a new antler queen, just like Natalie did. And with this passing of the necklace, also the passing of the mantle of the antler queen. So that's why I think it's interesting that the antler queen at this time of Natalie is still wearing the necklace. Myself personally, I really like the idea of Nat and Lottie being the only two antler queens. Nat being selected the second antler queen was one of my favorite arcs of season two, and I feel like there being more antler queens on top of that would just take away from it. Nat and Lottie were at opposites of the spectrum throughout most of seasons one and two. Lottie was team rituals and wilderness, while Nat seemed to be one of the only level-headed and rational thinking girls left. Young Nat had her hands clean throughout most of the series and appeared to be one of the few innocent girls. And then you contrast this was this 180 in the season 2 finale of her becoming the antler queen and the ruler of this cult. I think it was awesome to watch unfold. It also made adult Nat and young Nat feel far more connected. To me the two always felt very disconnected and felt like separate characters at times. I couldn't understand how young Natalie turned into adult Natalie. But was this newfound understanding that Natalie was the antler queen explained so much to me about adult Natalie. It explained why adult Natalie had this guilty conscience and would constantly bring up the atrocities that girls committed in the woods. Adult Thaisa or Shauna did everything they could to avoid talking about it, but Natalie would remind them of what they did. Knowing she was the antler queen also added to the depth of her battle with drug addiction. So I'm sorry about this sidebar, but the rise and fall of Natalie literally in season two, was one of my favorite parts of it. It was a highlight for me. And while the addition of more antler queens would be cool, I think in the long run, it would just take away from Natalie's character. Another big thing that people noticed in this new promo was a sign outside of the trailer of the actress who plays Akila. The sign said, quote, young Akila. And this caused complete chaos and people to just run with the idea that Akila was now a confirmed survivor and a sure to appear in the present timeline. And I'll admit, I fell for this idea at first. I thought they let out a massive secret. But I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but all of the characters in the 1996 timeline are referred to as young blank. So young Shauna, young Misty, young Javi. Even if it's a character like Javi who's confirmed not to appear in the present timeline. So while I do think Akila actually has a chance of surviving, she's one of my sleeper picks. This isn't evidence of that. We know filming is happening in Vancouver, Canada, just as the previous two seasons. I know I mostly talked about the 1996 timeline in this video, but the adult timeline has resumed filming as well. Christina Ricci posted a picture on her Instagram of her in full Misty mode. Likewise, Elijah Wood was featured in this new promo I'm talking about, and I'm so excited to see more Walter. I thought he was a great addition to the cast in season two. Most importantly, however, there's no further news if Ella Purnell will reprise her role as Jackie in season three. At the end of the day, that's all I care about. On a serious note, though there's so much good television coming out here in June with season 3 of The Bears, season 4 of The Boys, season 2 of House of the Dragon, that it's easy to forget about season 3 of Yellow Jackets. But with all of this new news and theories, the excitement for me is at an all time high. I can't wait to see what's next. If you guys have any thoughts on this new information or theories, please be sure to drop them in the comments. I'd love to talk more Yellow Jackets with you guys. And if you have any other ideas of other content, whether it be other film and television videos or more Yellow Jackets videos, please let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one.